It's been a while. I know I shouldn't have kept you waiting. But I'm here now. Hello everyone, today I am going to be reviewing the fifth studio album by American singer Britney Spears. This album is titled Blackout. It was released on October 25th, 2007. I've been getting some requests to cover Britney more on this channel, and I've got to be honest, I wasn't exactly expecting to cover her a lot. I think Britney is a great pop act. I think she's a trendsetter for pop music. But as far as analyzing in-depth reviews, I don't necessarily find it that, uh, worthwhile, you know, dissecting for too long. So maybe this video will be shorter than my others as they tend to go on and on and on. Um, but if I had to pick one Britney Spears album to review as of right now, this was the one that came to mind. It doesn't mean I won't review more Britney albums. I probably will review at least one or two more. Um, although I can't necessarily say I'm going to review all of them because I just wouldn't have enough to say. Um, but Blackout is, I think, one of the more iconic records of her career, along with her uh, two debut albums. She'd come from a hiatus and about four years, and she really kind of changed her image around, but she also was going through a very tumultuous period in the media. As we all know, she had gone through not only the births of her two children and her divorce from Kevin Federline in 2006, but she also went into a rehab treatment center in Malibu, California, after she was drinking so much. She was partying like crazy. You know, she's a new mother. She needs to not be doing that kind of stuff. There's the infamous time where she shaved her head. All of these things. And this album serves as a sort of perfect reminder of that era for Britney, but also as a sort of more glossy, glamorized version of it. It's a very kind of nice little consistent uh, slice of that lifestyle. It's very tabloids. It's very flashy. It's very Hollywood. And it's very grimy and grungy. There's a darkness to this sound and eroticism to Britney that we haven't seen so much before that, before she was such a, you know, bubblegum pop princess. There's a lot of dubstep influence. I think that uh, the producers she worked on were brilliant. She works with the Neptunes, Danger. She works with Bloodshy and Avant. I think she works with Pharrell Williams just a little bit. Um, so she's all over the map, but she's got all these great producers on board to help create a really great 2000s decade pop record that is very future facing rather than, you know, rehashing music that she's done on her past four pop albums before. And you could tell she was already kind of heading in this direction within the zone. But this album really solidifies this sort of more mature Britney, this Britney who is almost 30 years old, who is slightly more... Uh, grown up, and that means also more risque, but at the same time, I think symbolizing a shift in her perspective. After Blackout, she become in the media, I think, a much more stable figure um, to sort of document and show the fans in a little bit more of a fun way all the craziness that she was going through, um, the tumult with her divorce and having children and... Um, touring, all of these things. It was the apex of her career, and she was at that point where it could have literally broken her, and Britney could have never come back. You know, she could have been like Lindsay Lohan. She could have been like, uh, you know, so many other, like, you know, I mean, Paris Hilton still makes music, but you know what I mean? Like, she, she was at a point where she could have never come back, but Blackout was like, this is how I'm going to do this. This is a change. This is a blackout. This is a, this is a new chapter for me. You know, we do get some pretty raw honesty. We get a lot of uh, sexual, provocative lyrics. Um, it's very unashamed um, and the presentation of this record. And at the same time, you know, there's an honesty to, you know, her telling the media to back off. I mean, Piece of Me is the greatest example of that. Gimme More, the lead single, is this pulsating rhythmic nightclub dance song. It's very Europop. It's very Electropop. I remember when I first heard it, it was like this really insidious little track. It, it's actually quite long and it has all of these interesting male vocals kind of layered into the production and the mix. Um, and it has that slight Bollywood feel at points where the vocals are distorted and they're going all over the place. The music video is grungy. It's not very um, well lit. 
Um, it's it's a very erotica Madonna, you know, if you know that album, it's it's hearkening back to sort of that image imagery. Think the deeper and deeper music video by Madonna from the 90s, for example. Um, I think that the Gimme More video could have been a little bit more tasteful just because I find it a little boring to watch. Um, it's really just her grinding on a pole. But the video aside for Gimme More, it's a good teaser for the palette of this record. Piece of Me is where the album really like really asserts itself and it grabs your attention um, over this very, very electro dance beat that is very clear and precise and is also very down tempo. And it sort of provides this smooth, sultry backdrop for Spears to almost rap as she sings and delivers these very clever lyrics, making fun and pointing out this double reality that she lives, where, you know, people are judging her because of what they read in the tabloids when it's not necessarily what's real in her own life. People are going to say what they want to say about her. A little bit like what Taylor Swift is now doing with her Reputation um, album, but this is a little thing, I think a little bit more just like open and honest. It's so clever and witty. I love the distorted vocal of her sound effects in the background and the dynamic shifts in pitch. It just creates a futuristic sounding electro pop song that has this groove to it that is undeniable and it's really fun to dance to. The music video is just, it's just very much, I mean, I can see why it's such an iconic video for her career. By the way, I'll link in the description, I've made a top 10 Britney Spears video um, where I discuss my top 10 favorite Britney Spears songs. And there are several songs on this record that make that list for me. Radar was actually released more as a single later on for her Circus album, but the song is actually for this record. That's when we finally got the music video for it. It's a little bit of R&B influence starting to come through in the album on this song. And although it is very simmery and silky electro pop with very distorted and obviously auto-tuned vocals, um, which I think are a little too auto-tuned for my taste. This song, I feel like it does get a little processed for my liking, and so it doesn't stand out quite as much, especially in the refrain, as I feel like it's just a little bit too heavily processed. But it speaks about, you know, a serial relationship, you know, where I'm, you have got you on my radar and I'm going to hone in on you. Again, unapologetic and sort of stating how it is, not like being too shy about your, your lusts or your affections for someone else or how you're feeling. Break the Ice is my favorite song on this record, and it has this really trippy anime or cartoon music video. It would have been great to see this music video, as I talked about in my Britney Spears Top 10 video, if there had been choreography, because I can see this as a very choreographed dance production. Um, but Danger's production is just so icy and smooth and I will always think, I mean, I say icy because of Break the Ice, but there's this there's this cold nature to it that gives it a very hard edge. Um, it's edgy. Um, I think it's very forward-facing. It's a very great statement song um, about returning after her hiatus to set, this to set the tone for what's to come. Carrie Hilson, who is another R&B pop singer, actually sings vocals in the background. She was involved in the writing of this song. Um, and there is also a choir involved which creates a little bit of an apocalyptic feel towards the end. And I love that where a uh, little interlude where she says, I like this part, and it becomes this bass dubstep drop, which is, you know, it's EDM, but it's not over the top. It's not screaming this is EDM music. It's just a nice groove and vibe that allows the song to sort of just, just sort of be, and it doesn't feel like it's propped up by some amazing electronic effect. It's just a supplement to the vibe and essence of the song. And it does have some rave scene influences, along with the R&B. Some people talked about the crunk sound. I would compare it to M M Nelly Furtado's Say It Right. Um, I think it has a little bit of that uh, production matched with the eerie, kind of more atmospheric vocal effect that is so much more a little bit in the Timbaland direction. Um, and since Danger is a protege of Timbaland, you can hear the fact, you can hear Timbaland's influence in the production of this song, which I definitely love. The synthesizers are just so raw and so blaring. It's a little bit like a siren call. It just, it, it calls your attention. Um, and it's, it's very centrally focused around the beat and her, her voice. So I think it's just a very well composed, produced pop song that all the elements kind of just fall right in line with each other. So Heaven on Earth is one of the few moments on this record where Britney really kind of lets you in a little bit more. It's not, it's a more soft presentation. Her vocals are more soft. Um, there's a lot of 
layering to her singing. So they all kind of get a little bit chaotic in parts. Um, her vocals. I'm not not so sure how I feel about this song. It just didn't instantly grab me. And maybe because there's a little bit more of a lazy delivery to, to her vocal performance, it doesn't really catapult the, the propelling sort of nature of the production. I mean, this feels like spaceships. This feels like some sort of space odyssey. It's, it's very futuristic production. And yet at the same time, it's very that new wave, chilled out kind of vibe, electronic pop music. Um, with a bit of Euro disco in there. And I find vo I find Britney's vocals, it's nice to see them more soft and refined, but at the same time, I feel like the mixing around them is just too, uh, too similar and she doesn't stand out as much. Um, and the melody doesn't get a chance to really shine either because it sort of just kind of like falls into this haze. It's a problem that happens on several of these songs, not just on this record, but in Britney's catalog in general. Um, but it's still, it's a nice kind of more down, uh, down to earth moment, but at the same time it's up in space. Um, but just Brittany being a little bit less, um, uh, commanding in her presence and being a little bit more soft and delicate. Get Naked, I Got a Plan. One of the very like unapologetic risque songs. I mean, this song is debaucherous and it doesn't shy around that. It's just, whatever happens, I want to get naked with you. My body is calling out for you. If you like what you see and your curiosity, let your mind roam free. Won't you pay attention, please? So um, I think as far as lyrics go, there's not much else to discover. But I will say that um, the pitch shifting on her voice is, I think, very well done. Um, and I do find that beat to be... There's something so infectious about it. Um, there's something that uh, really captivates that darker kind of sexual energy that I think she's going for in this song so well. This song could have fallen completely flat on its face without Danger's sexual, sensual production, um, where it just overlays and overlays and and rises up and down, you know, in a very sexual manner. And I find it to be just a bit offbeat enough to just keep it interesting and fresh. Um, this song feels very fresh in the production. Britney has named this her favorite song on the record. As Britney states, this song has a little bit more of a deeper meaning. It's not just about getting naked and turning off your clothes. It's about bearing your soul for someone else um, and kind of asking for that person to be more vulnerable around them so that they can see and love each other more fully. Freak Show is another highlight. It's probably my second favorite song on this record because of that wobbly bass dubstep rhythm. It is just so infectious. Britney's vocals are silky smooth, perfectly produced. And their processed elements in there, I think, are worthy additions to her sexual delivery. That uh, voice, uh, I can't even do it. It's just beautifully accented. And um, the vocal pitches and shift changes and distortions are just all over the place. I mean, this song is so vocally distorted, it's almost hard to recognize actual humans singing it um, and her own voice. But it could come off as really cheesy and weird. And at first you might think that, but at the same time, you just have to let it take over and you feel the groove, you feel the beat. And, you know, this song is about, you know, like getting nasty, having fun, surrendering to your inhibitions and show what you got, you know, be, un be unapologetic and be sexual and free and liberated. Britney has also stated she wishes this had been a single. It's got so much fun energy and some wit and sass. So Toy Soldier, it's got that military drum roll. It's very militant. It reminds me a lot of London Bridge by Fergie. Um, it's supposedly influenced by Destiny's Child song, Lose My Breath. And I do hear that. I think it's a very, it's a very Britney Spears moment. Let's just put it this way. You know, the allegory, the allusion to a toy soldier um, and describing a male partner and the, the need for someone strong, the need for someone to be able be there for her when she needs her. And so she's alluring to the fact that she wants a real man. She wants a real soldier, not a toy. You know, she doesn't want a fake, unreliable, uh, or she, she doesn't want a stand-in or a representation of one. She wants the real thing. Um, and she's ready to try something new. And so there's this feistiness. There's this uh, rambunctious quality to her vocal delivery. It's very fast. Sing rapping again, heavily adopted. A lot of R&B grooves. Very, very, would expect from a Britney who is unapologetically 
embracing her sort of girly instinct to, you know, go after men kind of in a serial fashion. Um, so it's what you would expect. I don't know what else to really say. It's kind of hit or miss for me. I'm not entirely sure. Sometimes I like this song more than others, but it's an interesting song. I mean, I, I do think it's clever. I think it's fun. I think it's like all of these songs, just so sexual. I mean, I've never heard pop sound so good in so many ways. And that's why I had to talk about this record because it just, you know, I, I know you might think like, oh, it's so banal or it's, it's so um, one dimensional. But I mean, there's always a side to us that will, you know, I, I think for fun pop music, this checks all the boxes. The very upbeat Hot as Ice um, is very spunky. It's, it has T-Pain's vocals in the background, which are very barely recognizable. Um, personally, I find this song to be a little bit of, like after hearing so much stronger, like electro pop songs with her, I feel like in this album, this song kind of falls flat for me. Um, I don't really like the Hot as Ice, This is Twice as Nice rhyme. I just think it's a little bit lazy. Um, and it kind of carries so much of the, the memory value for the song. But yeah, that it does have that hip hop influence. Um, again, all of these songs cohesively like belong so well as a body of work because they all have the same flavors and elements of um, this very sensual R&B hip hop production. Ooh Ooh Baby is a very simple song. It, definition of catchy. Um, there's a flamenco guitar which carries through the melody line and there are some great vocal harmonies. So I think it redeems itself at this point in the album and it keeps it a memorable, catchy, fun song. Singing could be about her kid, could be about a lover. It's a little bit more simplistic. I mean, Ooh Ooh Baby is not necessarily a groundbreaking line, especially for a pop artist like Britney Spears, who basically coined the term using baby in a pop song. Um, and so it, it sort of capitalizes on that a little too much. I kind of find it a little rep repetitive and simplistic, but the melody line and the harmonies are really strong. And I think the vocals, again, they're just very well suited to this very sort of classic Britney um, with a little bit of a sexual flair to it. Perfect Lover is another huge highlight. The most sensual song, the most get on the floor and gyrate type beat that just compels you. Um, like a lot of the songs in this album, it's like the power of Britney compels you. Very experimental. Um, the producers were having just a lot of fun. Um, Danger, especially, we're just having so much fun just overlaying and seeing what works and seeing what synthesizers would work here and capitalizing on the successes of other songs that I'm sure they were feeling were really getting in the groove for. The melody line is almost not there. It actually kind of stays very kind of on the same tone throughout, but there's just these minor shifts in melody that, that actually create something quite unique. And so the melody kind of shifts from, I think, major to minor key in like these very articulate ways. It's a very complex song. And so I find there's actually a lot instrumentally to look into, um, but it is just so undeniable. Of course, it's about, you know, again, this tryst or this kind of nightclub meetup with someone really sexual and sexy and you're feeling this attraction, all of that is capitalized upon. But there's just something so earnest and so like we need to get on the dance floor right now about this song. Um, it's a call to dance type beat. I'm closing out the album, we have the R&B Pharrell Williams produced song, Why Should I Be Sad? I love his vocal uh, interludes in there, Come On Britney, Let's Go. It kind of just keeps the rhythm of this song blending well with her sort of more sultry vocal performance, which reminds me a lot of Justin Timberlake. It's very, it's very crooning. It's very a good blend of all the styles of her singing that we kind of hear throughout this record. Although at the, towards the end, I do think in the bridge, her vocals just are too processed and too high register for her. I think it kind of falls out and it loses a little bit in the space of the production. The production really wants to kind of overcome her vocals. And overall, I think that is kind of the biggest issue is that production is like this beast and it's like rolling underneath Britney. And sometimes it works as a pairing, but sometimes it really does want to kind of just swallow her up in it. And that's not just this album that she has this problem with. She has it on other albums too. Her auto-tuned voice kind of does become a part of the production and the instrumental. And there are times where you can tell she's going for that, but then there are times where you can tell she's not, and that's where it really backfires. So the listen can be a little bit jarbled. It can feel like the mixing isn't that strong. Um, and I just wish her voice would kind of stand out a little bit more. 
Um, but then again, I think it's about that kind of robotic effect most of the time. It's about like the fun, playful, distorted vocal is, you know, what the beauty of electronic music can do um, and create something really fun and interesting to the ear that, again, doesn't really know what's going to come next because the offbeats, the syncopation, the rhythm, everything is sort of jarbled into a kind of different sort of twist. It's always got this unique twist to it. And so we get a lot of key changes. We get a lot of interesting pitch shifts and dynamics, but ultimately it does feel very kind of like this one cohesive sound of a record, kind of like one song reiterated into different forms. We never really slow down that much or get too minimal. Um, which is fine. I don't necessarily think a ballad would fit so much on the character of this record. This is a very assertive album. It's a very extroverted album. This isn't her so much looking within, even though there are those moments like on Why Should I Be Sad, reflecting on her breakup with Kevin Federline. It's basically directly addressing him in this song. Um, or on Heaven on Earth. There's a bonus track, Everybody, which features a very eurythmic sounding beat, and she kind of is very breathy and sexual over it. Again, it's just this reiteration of these very fun, undeniable pop grooves that I think are very iconic and fun that are great to dance to. But again, lyrically, I don't really dive too much more into it than that, because it is just about having fun. It's about the spark of love. It's about a newfound confidence that Britney is showing in this record. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope I did it justice. Um, I know this is a lot of Britney fans' favorite album. Um, I have been getting requests to do Glory. Um, I will say this, I do not view Glory nearly as favorable as I do Blackout. Um, I do not think Glory is necessarily her best. Um, and I don't, I don't think, I think many Britney fans would agree on me on that, but I probably will review it. Um, it'll be a little bit from now, but I will get to it, don't worry. Um, and I may review even a few other records of hers down the line. So I've linked in the description my top 10 Britney list. I highly recommend you watch that. Do please give a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.